Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Cosmic Will Sisterhood. So in the last episode, we kind of ticked off one of our friends of a friend um, by trying to initiate World War Three. Now, granted, uh, it's not that I necessarily wanted to do <laughs> World War Three, but apparently she was instructed from Adina to cause World War Three, and that would have caused problems and so on and so forth. But um, it did tick her off. Jasmine came and reprimanded her, uh, rep ah, excuse me, reprimanded us. And um, yeah, we kind of apologized and just kind of went on about our business. However, we have a letter from Greet now, so I think we will be meeting with her again. Dear Fortuna, Dahlia's given me a magic dagger to perform an exorcism. Have you found anything else? Is it all right if I come over so that we can try the ritual together? Oh, shoot. Um, I don't have any air. Um, can I read an interactive uh, fiction to get some air, possibly? Let's see. Yeah, let's read an interactive fiction. I'll pick an interactive tale at random for my collection. Tickles by Emma Rios. Back and forth, this wooden husk I take my naps in wandered adrift in an endless, mercilessly, uh, endless, merciless sea. Oh, I remember this also. Swayed by fate, we both had aspired to meet a destination. For that, we survived storms, dodged leviathans, ignored decline, hunger, and thirst. Inspiration burnt our souls, making us survive by and for desire. But the infinite happiness of meeting a goal doesn't last long. Now, here I lay, longing for a reawakening. I think the messenger is back, but maybe it's just my mind playing tricks on me again. This little friend is a dissonant note in the everyday routine of doing nothing, barely feeling and being bored to death. Once, it even tickled. In truth, it's been days since I could move my limbs, since I started feeling so exhausted. I can but lie under the sun and wait for a less blinding starry night, stirred by somehow noticing, oh, excuse me, stirred by somehow noticing another living being close. The little bird lights me up inside. I gave this friend the title of Hopebringer, in anticipation of a well-earned rest sh shorewards, on more quiet grounds. The wet valley trickled, ah, the wet valley tricked me into believing I'm a mariner, one that has seen better days. However, any recollection of my past keeps fading fast. I'm lucky I can still listen. The sea teaches you to let things flow. The tide goes up and down, but every drop has to go ashore at some point to kiss the dry land. My boat did it recently, so say the new whispers of the waves, and the storm, and the wood finally cracking and stumbling upon a sandbank. A kiss is a bit too passionate for my taste. I wonder if I have ever kissed someone. I like kissing gently. Look at all these, all this drama. My old self still tries to spur their memories. I'm adrift, but happy to have missed the whole intensity of the wreckage. The numbness in my limbs keeps the pain at bay, but they can still tickle. Isn't touch nice? Feeling another fellow, even scarcely? Like those little claws grazing softly all over me. If only I could touch its feathers to return such a beautiful gift. If only a friend could still be within my grasp. Please tell me, little bird. Should I endure or should I give up? I'm, uh, I, want, I think I said grace last time around. I'll say cursed. My arm stretches out with a mind of its own. It craves purpose. There's so many things I still yearn for. To feel alive, I only need to let go of the tissues and tendons that bind me. Unstick myself from these bones. Look at me, little bird. I cheat the laws of gravity. Hush, hush stupid turnstone bird. Isn't there enough fish in the sea that you needn't eat from a corpse? 
Oh my god, that's a woman talking. Look at all this mess. She doesn't seem to notice me. Should I start a conversation? It would be very rude otherwise. Excuse me, miss. My voice crawls out of my throat as broken as the rest of what left me. These deadened senses don't allow me to pro to pro properly introduce myself, but why do I suddenly sound so eerie? Ah, a talking ghost. Oh no, I made this poor woman jump in fright. I, 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 I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. Whoa, it's trying to hit me with, she's trying to hit me with her stick. But please put your cane away. Be careful of who you startle to death, Spooky. What a witch I am. Since when can a simple shadow catch me off guard? Listen, ghost, I put a hex on my crone's heart. If it jumps out of this chest, our arteries will have your sob strangled in eternal pain. She keeps waving that staff. She truly wants to kill me. P please st stop. Don't hurt me. I beg you. We are trouble, you know, old hags. Why is this person threatening me? What did I do to her? I mean you no harm, I swear. Who's terrified now, ghost? Not this old crow. It's been a while since my last exorcism, but at least I haven't lost my touch. I was merciless when I was young, feared on both sides of existence. Not for power, not for greed, not by choice. The world and the underworld both hate magic. Nonetheless, I cared and committed to educate losers who wouldn't let me live my life on my own terms. Far and wide, ignorance makes one arrogant, daring, cruel, and goddamn credin. I was enduring, then I became hell. What reason was there to let their bitter fear erase who I am? Call me a hoodlum. I made them all sure cursed. I'm so scared myself. Are you, imp? Serves you right. Please, I need help. I don't know what's happening to me. Why do I speak this weirdly? Wait, don't tell me. You called me a g g g ghost. Am I truly shit? Oh, gods. Oh, gods. Indeed, it looked way too shaken for a creature from the afterlife. The poor fellow may have just died. It doesn't happen very often, but the phantom amnesia can turn the coldest assassin into a pure gentle mind. Unaware of any harm they, ha they may have done, of any pain they may have suffered, of any mistake to feel remorse over. Ghosts become too sensitive for this world. Hey, don't cry. Please don't cry. I was a bit of a bully. I got scared and I overreacted. You're so translucent I could barely see you. Not all of us are, cons are the considerable type. Old people don't give a shit. We forget to be nice. There's something more pathetic than a necromancer losing her shit. Ahem. A necromancer feeling embarrassed. For that, I am sorry. No, no, it's my fault. I can't see very well either. Everything feels so confusing. If I offended you, I apologize. Far be it from me to hurt anyone. A skith with a rotting passenger that happens to be well-mannered and gentle. It's all cool, don't worry. Unbinding this poor soul is going to be more difficult than I thought. Your kind, my kind, she just said see the world just like we see you, blurrily. That's why you get lost so often. I must be levitating over my corpse. Do I reek? I'm sure I do. I can't even smell the sea. This is so embarrassing. I is it normal for the departed to feel benumbed? Fate always takes its toll on our senses, little ghost. Look at me, one foot in the grave, and yet my brain furiously believes I'm still in my 20s. How can I compare myself? This poor soul is dead. Stinky, rotten, 
beyond repair, trying to grasp a glimpse of existence for a reason, to finish something, to claim our desire, perhaps to be still worthy of being loved. Actually, I can't remember how old I was when age is irrelevant, Spooky. There's only one way to die a peaceful death, and that is to choose it yourself. For the rest of us, there's always something. A dream, a promise, something to make amends for. Witches are ghosts. We are all cursed. We can't help it, my friend. The living and the dead. We are all adrift in the wild. She just called me her friend. If I had a heart, it would have skipped the beat. Whether it's for little pleasures or trials to overcome, the living and the dead treasure every second of consciousness. How could you not be a form of life? I'm but a fool, an old hag trying to cheer up a specter by getting depressed herself. Would you mind if I smoke? Oh no, not at all. I couldn't stop thinking about my body smelling. <laughs> Aren't you an anxious one? What a dumb thing to worry about. She's so kind. Pretty cool, too. Smoking fancily right beside me like the heroine of the story. I could blush. Tell me something about you, little ghost. Your voice comes along with a strange echo that tickles in my ears and reverberates a somewhat sweet melancholy. It feels akin to my own sadness. Wow, now I'm blushing. Oh, thanks. Wait, why am I talking... I mean, why am I taking this as a compliment? I thought my voice sounded truly awkward. I think it's beautiful. Even if she's only trying to be kind, I feel so relieved. How long has it been since someone was nice to me? A sadness akin, a final memory to treasure. There's not so much I can tell. I've been conscious all this time but also forgetful. I made it here thanks to a little friend, but now that I have acknowledged myself, I feel I have lost my bird forever. Damn, I'm such a stupid woman. I sent your bird away because it was eating from you. I'm sorry. No problem. My flesh is not very healthy. Was that supposed to make me feel better, Spooky? Can I ask you something? Sure, whatever you want. Are you here to vanish me? Oof, the first rule of this job was never sympathize with ghosts. Don't worry, I'm not in a position to rebel. I'm stranded in a dead sea in which it is impossible to sink, but it is also terrifying to put a foot forward. Wasn't that poetic? I have a soft spot for artists. I'm a sea witch. It's my job to take care of the ones like you. I must pull out the ribs protecting your heart to make a broth in salt water. I must bless the branch of a willow to whack your boat with. I must bury your, you under the tree so its root, its roots tie your spirit forever. I understand. I can only be a burden for those I would be sharing this fainting dead with. No, you understand nothing, Spooky. I'm discarded myself, forsaken by people I loved who willingly traded me for busy lives and for feeling invulnerable. I have at least five years left. I'm in a position to rebel. If I had breath, she'd have taken it away. I wish Ghost couldn't cry. It feels so embarrassing. Hey again, there's no need to be this dramatic. I didn't want to, I'm cursed. I'm sorry, I can't help it. You're your kindness is devastating. I'm lifeless, and yet you want me to live. To live is to be scared, Spooky. 
But if we keep taking the next step, we may find something to gain for ourselves. I'm not kind. I'm bored. I want someone to tell me stories. Call, call. Look who's back. This bird is too lazy to catch fish by itself. I thought I didn't have stories to tell her, but I have at least one. It's about a little bird that gave a ghost some hope to live. I would gladly try to make up stories to speak with you as friends. You gave me fire. I didn't need fire. Hmm. This doesn't seem like it's passing time, so I'll do one more. I'll pick an interactive tale at random from my collection. The Hand of the World by Ava Sid. A girl who, ambling along the path, shrouded in the smoky haze of dawn, she was crying. The words of father still echoed in her head. The warmth of his last kiss still beat on her cheek. Since you were born, I knew there was something strange about you. It's time for you to join your kind. And without further ado, father left her in the thick of the night. The path was narrow and marked a trail that was easy to follow but hard to swallow. A slight furrow of land that led to a whole new life. After hours of walking, the girl stumbled upon the knocker of a trap door on the ground, right where the path ended. It was a beautiful and antique looking piece, a hand carved in bronze holding a sphere between its fingers, a globe. She pulled gently and the hatch reacted to her touch by opening diligently. The globe was waiting for her. The girl entered the blackness beneath the floor, groping the height of the steps until she emerged into a dimly lit room. As her eyes became used to the gloom, she spotted the hunched silhouette of a woman at the back of a vaulted chamber. Welcome, my child. From now on, you will be the daughter of another flesh, the sister of another blood. Are you ready for the initiation rite? I have no choice. You carry within you the primordial force that secretly rules this world, but such a power needs to be tamed. Power requires sacrifice, just as the world needs balance. The woman approached her. Her skin was wrinkled like the ridges of a freshly plowed field. The force rests in the space between pairs of opposites. We must relinquish one of our senses to focus that force. Sight and hearing govern the rationality of people. Smell and taste drive their emotions. The girl struggled to understand. What about touch? That is the only sense we cannot renounce. We are the hand that subtly rules the becoming. It is the tool for channeling our magic. The girl scrutinized the woman's face, wondering what her choice would have been and what kind of magic she would flaunt. She thought it would be easier to live without some senses than others. Surely there was a catch. Do not be afraid. Look inside yourself and you will know the right choice, said the woman. Uh... Mm, should I do without the exquisite taste of the succulent fruits of the earth? Should I do without the countless fragrances with which nature enraptures us? Should I do without the music and the warm voices surrounding and guiding us? Should I do without the reliable witness of my eyes, the crystalline window between me and the world? Oof. I really like food. Hmm. Smell is nice, but hmm, I could probably do without it. Uh, I love music so much as well. I mean, I was in band, so of course I love music. And my eyesight is already shit right now, and I couldn't imagine just not having it at all. That would suck. Hmm. I'm going to go with smell. You have chosen to forego the sense of smell, the mighty wave that envelops the most profound desires with significance. Your, renun your renunciation will also be your force because only from humility and detachment can you exercise power. From now on, 
you will be able to color the nuances of desires and nurture them with meaning. Oh, that gave me water. I didn't need water. All right. Well, I guess we'll go ahead and jump into this. Hopefully I can pull a card and maybe get some air before I get the choice, but it's not looking good. Hey, how are you feeling? Hmm, corrupted? The behemoth is beginning is beginning to taint my thoughts, and I don't like how powerful it feels. You still want to see this through, or... Of course I want to. I'm way too proud to let this extra-dimensional asshole take all the credit. <laughs> I feel you. Okay, what did you find? Let's use everything in our arsenal. The ritual will mainly dev revolve around Dahlia's demon bone dagger. It truly is a work of art. Here, look. It's pretty nice. Kinda reminds me of the daggers from uh, Dune. How can Dahlia be so talented? She told me that you helped her create it. Ah, I just shared some insight with her. What about you? I mean, what about? She wanted to know what kind of essence to use to enchant the dagger to craft a blade that has the highest affinity with you. Whoa, so that's why she called it the Blade of Truth. I love it. This is the best dagger I could get. You totally get me, Fortuna. Thank you so much. <laughs> My pleasure. Glad you liked it. This is perfect. So first of all, do you mind if I summon a Fate Mancer's disc to check on our chances of success? Of course. But what's a Fate Mancer's disc? Ah, uh, of course. It was invented about 80 years ago by Junrisha, the mathematician witch, so you wouldn't know about it. It's a special sigil that reads fate strands. When you find yourself before a critical and inidentifiable turning point in your life, you can bind your soul to the disc so it reads the probability of whatever you want to happen. Wow, I like it. Sounds like a great companion to my deck. In short, we can read how effective whatever actions we perform in the ritual will be. Knowing the percentage may not change anything, though. It's just for peace of mind. On the contrary, it sounds really useful. As per the third principle of divination, just the act of observing your chances affects your chances. Hmm. I didn't consider it that way. I hope it affects them for the best. <laughs> anyway, here's the disc. Oh. My chances aren't as good as I'd hope. It's no small thing, exercising a behemoth. But we haven't taken everything into account yet. Let's turn fate into in our favor. You're right. I must be strong. First of all, I asked my friend Jasmine to provide us with some herbs to help ease your mind. With these, you should be able to focus better on the ritual. Now, I do wonder if I would have told, told Jasmine about the behemoth. Would she have given me something more effective? But again, I feel like she would have snitched. It smells good. You need to drink the infusion while you think of a toy you love when you were a mortal child. Hmm. I surely love my Legos. But my favorite thing was my Jake plushie from Adventure Time. I don't know what that is, but it sure worked on your on your face already. <laughs> I feel less tense, yes. Look, the Fate Mancer disc went up slightly. This is working. Good. I thank Jasmine for me. I think it'll be better if you thank her yourself. <laughs> sure, it'll be my pleasure. Okay then, can you run me through the, the specifics of the ritual? It's more straightforward than I thought it would be. Most of the heavy work has already been done by Dahlia crafting this magnificent dagger. You need to insert the blade into my chest. Me? You need to try and leave one side of the blade facing my flesh and the other side facing the behemoth. I've never stabbed anyone in my life. It's not so much stabbing as precision cooking. You do cook, right? Yeah, I know my way around, around kitchen knives, but this... 
I can't do it myself, Fortuna. I believe in you. Why don't we call Dahlia and have her cut you? No, I want you to do it. I feel a special connection to you. I... Look, the percentage on the disc went up just from me explaining this to you. We're on the right path. Dahlia told me that the ritual will be more effective the stronger our bond is. I pretty much opened up about myself to you in a way I haven't for ages. So I believe a shortcut to make our bond more powerful would be if you told me something intimate about yourself. The less people know about it, the better. Ha, ah, okay. Tell me something secret about yourself. Uh... I think I used this one last time. Um, it did go up quite a bit, but I don't think I told her about the behemoth. So let's try the behemoth this time around. I summon the behemoth too. Shut up. You're putting your life in my hands, so I guess it's only fair I do the same. Abramar, show yourself. Holy cosmos. How is this possible? No one knows about this, not even my closest friends. Why do you have a behemoth? I don't have him. We're partners. We're only talking today because I summoned him. I couldn't endure my exile anymore, so I called upon him, and we're working together to regain my freedom. Abramar is the one who taught me how to channel Arcana to build my own deck. I owe him my life. That is, for lack of a better word, so cool. Fuck, it feels so good to say it out loud to another person. Thank you for understanding. Are you kidding? I'm like the ideal audience for that kind of revelation. <laughs> Jokes aside, thank you for trusting me. I feel really fortunate. And this goes without saying, but you can rely on me. Now, we're sisters in the forbidden. <laughs> the best kind of sisterhood there is. Abramar, can you leave us now? Understood. Time to put me under the knife? Ah, I'm not ready yet. You will never be more ready than now. And I'm ready to accept any consequences. Ah, just... Just let me meditate for a couple of minutes. Minutes. Just gather my focus, okay? Two whole minutes? That I have, sure. Thank you. Moment of truth. Have you made a decision? Do you want to pay for the behemoth's name? I don't have the fucking air, so... No, I think we can manage without you. I can't, but we'll see. No. So that's how much you value Greece's fate, huh? Or maybe we just don't need you. <laughs> yes, funny. Suit yourself. You're still there. Yes, I'm ready. Sorry, I just needed to collect myself. Ready for some stabbing? Don't say it like that. Sorry, I was just trying to blow off some steam. Our ideas of what con constitutes relaxing differ dramatically, Grief. <laughs> it looks like you're relaxed, though. I guess that's the most important thing here. Okay, I'm going to insert the dagger now. Are you ready? Do it. I will say, I didn't have 68% last time. I think I had like 45. It wasn't an ideal situation. So, let's see. So, how do I look? We did it, Greeth. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're the best, Fortuna. Thank you so much. Ah, uh, I was so nervous. My heart was about to explode. Where's the behemoth now? They escaped. While you were pushing the dagger inside me, we had a very intense discussion that felt like it lasted eons. Finally, they got scared of me? It's like you were fueling me with some energy larger than this universe. It felt so empowering. You're, you are amazing, Fortuna. I'm so happy for you. What now? I'm going to make a round to share the good news. Especially with Dahlia. I owe her my life, too. Yeah, she deserve, deserves more credit than anyone. I promise I'll come visit you again soon. I didn't only regain my freedom here. I also gained you. <laughs> I'm happy I met you too. Okay, take care. See you soon. 
Goodbye. Yeah, last time I, I did get it to fuse with her and she had like black eyes, but they were one entity. What a busy life all of a sudden, huh? How are you feeling? Uh, it feels good. Life is worth living again. <laughs> Glad to see your mood has improved. So what are your plans now? Hmm. My biggest concern is still Adina. Sooner or later, she's going to find out about my new deck. If I want to be free, I'll need to deal with her at some point. Well, the cosmic wheel is already in motion. Look how quickly you've reconnected with the coven. Just stay alert and seize any opportunity the universe throws at us. How do you do it? Manipulate fate. You tell me. We're not so different. Not really. I mean, I get to read into possible futures. But escaping from Adina's sentence, sentence was an impossibility until I summoned you. Are you sure? It was by your will that I appeared. You're the one making the jigsaw fall into place. Hmm. Are you suggesting that I'm the one that created you? What? <laughs> Please, witch. I was just trying to encourage you. You owe me a lot, and you're paying a high price for all this. Don't forget it. But you summon me. That speaks volumes about the power of your will. Have more faith in yourself. Okay, okay, no need to mock me. Look, the Falcon has arrived. Oh, could it be from Thea? Dear Fortuna, I have terrible news. Please invite me to your home ASAP. Oh God. Ah, Fortuna. What is it? What happened? It's about your leader. What about Adina? Adina is dead. That's not bad news. Chapter 4, Succession. We are reunited here today to say goodbye to our good friend, Patrice. She lived intensely and died on her own terms. We are returning her body to the earth, just as she wished. Naked and covered in flowers, my body to the soil, my soul to my sister, to the stars. You lived in beauty and depart in beauty. Now, some words from, our, from her eldest son, Pedro. I'm not good with speeches, so excuse my brevity. I will always be in awe of all the life my mother brought into this world. And I'm not only talking about her numerous children and grandchildren. I'm talking about her words, her ideas, her wisdom. I don't know if any of us will ever achieve the clarity my mother had. With her gone, we've lost the brightest light in the universe. I wish any of our dads were decent enough to be half the person our mother was. I wish any of them were brave enough to have stayed by her side. Today, I didn't only lose my one true parent, but also my idol. Adios, mama. Te cario. Thank you, Pedro. Now, Mr. Stanton, you wanted to say something too? That's right. Thank you. I feel lucky that you're all letting me be a part of this moment. I wanted to share with you how much of an inspiration her family was to her. She always spoke of you so dearly. She loved you more than anything. Patrice could strike you as a cynical person at first. She always had the had that I'm too smart to be wasting my time with you vibe. <laughs> But she was ultimately driven by love, love of life and of the human experience. I've been extremely fortunate to have been her editor for the past 20 years. And I know for a fact that she has been a mother not only to you, but to hundreds of thousands of readers around the globe. Her unique pers perspective on pleasure 
and joy has been an inspiration for many women from many cultures. She's leaving a bleeding wound inside many hearts, but also a legacy. The world is stronger and healthier thanks to her. And that feeling, that energy will never die. Thank you, Patrice. Thank you, Mr. Stanton. Now to proceed with the last rites, I... Wait, I want to speak to... Ah, of course, go ahead. Grandma? You aren't really gone, are you? That body covered in flowers. You just had to leave that old husk behind, right? We had so many plans, so many ideas. I can't accept that you let a stupid cancer take away what we were building together. Right, Yaya? You haven't betrayed me, have you? Fortuna. It's okay, Pedro. Let her express herself. I can't do this by myself. Did you run off to the stars to look for your sister? You promised you'd take me with you to, the, to see the cosmos. If you don't come back right now, I will never forgive you. Maria, I'm sure your grandmother will keep guiding you from wherever she is. One never truly leaves this world. Patrice's body may turn to dust. Patrice's voice may have gone silent. But her essence is an everlasting gift we will never lose. Patrice, she's broken free from that name. Now we will call her Autumn. We will call her Tears and Fragrance, a mid-afternoon dream. Enough with the cheesy poetry already. You will never understand my grandmother or what we were doing together. Maria, I'm so sorry for your loss. Now, if no one has any more words to share, we will return her to the earth. May your soul bless the stars, Patrice. So, my prediction finally came true, eh? You managed to live 59 years, 11 months, and 21 days. For a second, I believed you'd be able to break free from your fate. You remained a tough bitch even in death. It's too hard to do this without you, your witty comebacks. I'm sorry I didn't come and visit you after I'd ascended. But time among the stars sure flies. And I wasn't sure how do you deal with the fact that your sister became a witch. I'm so sorry. That night on the beach, I started walking into the sea and never looked back. But somehow you knew, eh? You knew I wasn't dead. You're the only thing I missed from my time as a mortal. It's been tough up there without you. What about one last reading, for old time's sake? Ah. What should I ask about? I wonder how our relationship would have been if I had stayed. Do you mind if I indulge, Patrice? The Hermit. The Hermit's lantern is the lamp of truth, used to guide the unknowing. He holds a patriarch's staff to help him navigate narrow paths as he seeks enlightenment. His cloak is a form of discretion. I'd have married one of your husband's brothers, and we'd have had a big, happy family all together. We would have run a popular magazine together, with Ava as editor-in-chief. We'd help raise each other's children. You'd have taught them about love and literature. I'd have taught them about magic and pizza. <laughs> We'd have enjoyed long summer nights drinking wine with our husbands and friends, watching over the kids playing in the garden. Ah, Patrice, I miss you so much. I'm going to miss you so much. What the hell am I doing? Reading into the hypothetical. 
How can I be this cowardly? I owe you more than this. The first and only time I read into someone's death was for you. As a last present, I'll get real. I'll read beyond your death. I'm scared of that presence I found when you dared me to read into your demise. It was lurking there, watching us from the unknown. I'll look into its eyes now to see for myself where we're sending you off to. The devil. The beast is the keeper of everything that is forbidden. Their servants ooze with lust and invite you to fall into temptation, enlightenment beyond corruption. You will become an archivist of occult text. You will become an intergalactic detective. Mm. Sure. You will collect and translate many lost and forbidden texts and keep them safe in a massive five dimensional library. <laughs> what? I think I lost my talent. This doesn't make any sense. What in the cosmos am I doing? I'm sorry, Patrice. I'm just spewing nonsense. Don't leave me. <laughs> Six feet under my ass. Patrice! Fortuna? What is this? Is this the other side? Why are you in cosplay? Patrice, I love you. Uh, I love you too, silly. Are we ghosts? <laughs> no, Patrice. This is the real world. I'm a witch. And I believe you are one now too. Fuck me. <laughs> All right, so more things from the past. This is Adina. Fortuna, it is imperative that we speak before I vanish. Adina. She doesn't need anything to fly around. She just does. Hello, Fortuna. Is something the matter? I heard you were dead. That is correct. Hmm. You've never met the corpse of a witch. Keep forgetting how young some of you are. I always thought of death as just that, the end. It can be, if you are killed or erased. But a witch also dies when they lose the will to live. Now I am but an aimless corpse, waiting to be consumed by your sisters or to be scattered through the cosmos. Why are you visiting me then? Think of me as a ghost dealing with loose ends. In that case, my exile, is it over? I'm afraid it is not. Reviewing sentences now falls upon the next leader of the coven. And who that might be? It is yet to be decided. I sense something different about you. What have you done? You've grown. You feel like an adult witch now. It is a shame I did not get to meet you in this form. I don't know what you're talking about. What loose end have you come to tie up here anyway? You. I want to ask you what you have learned during this brief isolation. Uh, let's see. <laughs> That you're a bitch. Um, brief. Ah, summer flower. A millennium is but a breeze for a witch. I don't care that you're a boring old geezer, Adina. A healthy person needs stimulus. You've barely had to spend two centuries by yourself. Do not complain. You will thank me when you are old. I don't think I will. In any case, what have you learned during this period? 
Um, exile is not a constructive solution. The coven should actively work to make witches understand their mistakes and ensure a healthy coexistence. That path leads to weakness. It is just the opposite. Every witch should work on herself to make the coven stronger and not burden it with her shortcomings. Whatever. What was I supposed to learn? Allow me to explain. You have been wrong all along in calling your talent divination. What is tarot then if not divination? I should tell you about the nature of this universe. The secret of reality. Consciousness is a responsibility. Everything that is sentient modifies the nature of the realm we inhabit. All that has happened, every phenomenon, is only real because it has been perceived. The parts of the universe that have not been measured are yet to be defined. Your arts do not predict events, they define them. Unknowingly, you are shaping what didn't happen in the past as well as what is yet to happen. You're not a reader, you're a writer. That is why I exiled you. When you predicted the falling of this coven, you were in actuality dooming us all. I have worked hard to prevent that omen, and I'm still not sure if I've succeeded. Only time will tell. Why are you telling me this now? Because I'm dead. And I deem it better that you become aware of the magnitude of your ability, since I will not be here to protect the coven from you any longer. Why didn't you tell me to begin with? Because I was afraid you would write me off this plane. I'm well aware you despise me. Keeping you away from your deck was the only way I could think of to ensure some stability for the coven. Come on, I'm not the villain you think I am. Likewise. Fair enough. Remember, you can manipulate anything that does not exist. The future is the most obvious implications, but I am also talking about the past. You can alter anything that did not happen. So Dahlia's past then. Damn. The coven is about to go through some turbulent times. I do not think you are mature enough to handle your talent, but it is not in my hands anymore. Do as you please with this knowledge. I understand. Thank you for telling me all this. I have a parting gift. The Coppersmith. Dear sustenance, substance of kin, forsake the mortal hex, abandon flesh, abandon sinew. Thou art now my magic, thou art no more sin. This is a Super Arcana. Any card created with this image will allow you to access more readings than with a regular card. How did you... Even if you believe me a farce, the gods truly speak to me. They told me about the new deck you're crafting. This custom deck. It suits your arts better than the limited tarot. So my decision to have you exile has paid off in the end. So what? Do you expect me to thank you? I expect nothing. I am dead. This will be the last time we speak. Do you wish to say anything else to me before my departure? Uh... <laughs> Fuck you. I hope you burn in hell or thank you for everything. Um... Hmm. All of these are valid. Um... I'm not going to thank her, uh, but I do hope she burns in hell. Hell does not exist. Anything else? I will make this coven better. Good. I will leave now. Wait. Any last advice? No. Goodbye. <laughs> Hit me with the withers. No. 
Are you all right? <laughs> this is great news, actually. Is it? Absolutely. Imagine if I kept using our dick without understanding the implications. Now we can use it properly to turn the tide in our favor. <laughs> I thought you'd be more anxious about the weight of your actions from now on. I mean, I'm a bit worried about the readings I've done in the past. Hell, I caused the rise of that AI that's now ruling planet Earth. And I toyed with the past and future of my friends. However, now I can own my talents and help shape a better universe, universe for us all. What if you draw a card that only offers bad omens? Hmm, you're right. I'll have to be more careful with how I build my deck from now on. The stakes are really high, but there's also a lot of promise. Not that I'm aware of the potential repercussions. Well, now that I'm aware of the potential repercussions. In any case, I may need some time before I feel ready to read the cards again. Nonsense. I need you back in the game as soon as possible. Do you want me to look into what was bothering you then? Ah, well. Come on, do it for me, please. Now that I know your game isn't just divination, I'm not so sure about leaving such a delicate topic in your hands. I promise to look for the best outcome. Still, I'll tell you what. Let's put your talent to work in service of more immediate benefits. What about altering the coven's relationship with Behemoth now that Adina is gone? Hmm, that's not a bad idea. But what if what we find in the cards isn't good? I don't think there's anything worse than being forbidden and hunted. You're right. Okay, let's put this deck to use. Let's see. We want to look into how the Coven deals with behemoths. Right. And then we will look into what's worrying you. No, I told you. That's not going to happen. Alright, I had to try one last time. Shuffling time. Hmm. Yarding, passion, courage, power. Okay. This might not be bad. Behemoths and witches will get to coexist in harmony. You, Abramar, will get to rule this coven. This coven. I think I got this last time. So I won't be picking it this time. Yeah, they can coexist in harmony. That is delicious. I can't believe it's going to be as easy as that. You're the most terrifying witch I've ever met. A single sentence to solve all our problems. I still have trouble picturing this actually happening. It feels weird now, being aware that whatever comes out of my mouth will come true. Although it's always been like that, I guess. What were the other options? I'd rather not say. Feels like I'd corrupt the reading if I reveal them. Understood. Thank you, Fortuna. This means a lot to me. Not once in the history of this universe has anyone ever done so much for a behemoth. This wasn't just for you. Peaceful coexistence will be good for everyone. Of course. I'm thankful anyway. You're welcome. Hmm. Your deck feels way more dangerous now. I doubt I'll ever subject myself to your divination again. In all the universes I've existed in, nothing has ever made me feel so fragile. You must use this power wisely, I beg of you. Well, I never expected to get a behemoth to beg. This is serious indeed. It's not a laughing matter, Fortuna. Hey, don't look at me. You're the one who's always teasing when it comes to life or death issues. Got a taste of my own medicine, huh? Now I see it's not funny. Please, accept my apologies. Come on, don't be so uptight. I've got your back. Sure. Look, you've got mail. Right, let's see. 
Okay, so it looks like Dahlia and Jasmine wants to speak to me. I'm guessing it's going to be about Adina. However, I'm going to cut it right here. I think this is a good stopping point. Um, I do know what's kind of coming next, but we'll get into that in the next episode. So if you like the video, like the video. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe. I have a lot of things on the channel and I will have many other things in the future. If you have any questions, comments or concerns, please feel free to leave them in the comment section and I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.